Welcome to part 3 of lecture 19 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of what the pressure rises and pressure drops are in our single shaft turbojet. Right, so our engine pressure rises and drops must balance. The overall pressure rise is in the intake, P02 minus PA, and in the compressor, P03 minus P02. And for the drops, we have the turbine, P04 minus P05, and the nozzle, P05 minus PA. We'll always assume our nozzle is th thermally insulated and isotropic. From mass flow considerations, we can actually just directly get our turbine pressure ratio. If we assume the turbine's choked, and the propulsive nozzle will be choked most of the time, but in general, we'll keep the unchoked form here um, so we can see how that works. And we can rearrange the ratio of the non dimensional mass flows at the turbine inlet, inlet and uh, the nozzle inlet to get the pressure ratio of P05 over P04. And this is a function of an area ratio between the nozzle exit and turbine inlet and uh, the temperature ratio across the turbine and there's non dimensional mass flows. M bar 4 will be a constant because we assume it's choked, and M bar 5 depends on P09 over PA. We can get rid of the temperature ratio because we know the polytropic efficiency. So we can simplify this to just the uh, pressure ratio to some power um, is a function of the area ratio times uh, the ratio of the non-dimensional mass flows. Now, if the nozzle is choked, it really makes the life a lot simpler. In that case, the non-dimensional mass flow is equal in the turbine and the nozzle, and the, uh, the second term on the previous uh, slide's equation it becomes just one. So then that means that the pressure ratio is purely a function of area ratio and efficiency, as is the temperature ratio. The pressure ratio vary, uh, uh, is, is sort of P05 or P04 will be the area ratio to a power that's just a bit long, bigger than one, and the temperature ratio is something close to 0.2 for these specific values we've assumed. So the temperature and the pressure ratio are uniquely determined by the area ratio. Because the turbine operates, and this is because the turbine operates between two choked nozzles. So the nozzle guide vanes in the turbine and the propulsive nozzle at the engine exit. And this means that given the turbine inlet temperature, we can directly determine the turbine power. On the other hand, if the nozzle is unchoked, then we need to use an iterative solution. Um, to do this, we again assume the nozzle is choked, even though we don't expect that in the end it will be. And we can then estimate the pressure ratio for the turbine. And from the overall pressure ratio of the engine, we can get P09 P over PA, and then find an updated non-dimensional mass flow at the nozzle at station 9, um, update the pressure ratio estimate, and repeat until we converge. Going back to the case with the choked nozzle for now, we can essentially get a direct solution with no iteration. Right, since the turbine temperature ratio is determined just by the area ratio, the temperature drop in the turbine is proportional to the turbine inlet temperature. So just rearranging the equation, we can call KH as 1 minus P05 over P04, which is, which is constant. Um, and that's the temperature drop is just going to be the inlet temperature times that constant. And we can write it out under our current assumptions as A4 over A9 to the power, uh, sorry, 1 minus A4 to A9 to the power of 2.217. Um, you don't necessarily have to know those areas, though. Um, in practice, uh, you can get this KH from knowing what the performance of the engine is at the drawing condition. We can use the shaft power balance to yield the compressor work, right? If we ignore the differences in mass flow between the compressor and the turbine, right? So we can directly use the, fir the first law to, to sort that one out for us. And we can rearrange our compressor temperature ratio uh, or to get the compression temperature ratio P03 over P02, um, which at the end of the day ends up just depending on P04 over P02, uh, which is governed by fuel flow. We assume constant polytropic compressor efficiency, um, then, then uh, basically we're assuming we're not operating so far off design where the compressor is losing a lot of efficiency, but then we can very simply get the compressor pressure ratio um, by sort of raising to the right power the expression we have for temperature ratio. Um, and again, this KH can be determined if the overall pressure ratio and the turbine inlet temperature are known at one operating condition, which would normally be the design point. 
So the outcome of this matching is that if the propulsive nozzle is choked, we get the key result that the pressure ratio of the compressor is completely determined by the ratio of the turbine inlet area to the nozzle propulsive area uh, or throat, uh, nozzle propulsive exit area or throat, um, and that the turbine inlet to, and also the, the turbine inlet to compressor inlet stagnation temperature ratio. So these two things uniquely determine the pressure ratio of the compressor. There's nothing else that contributes. try to understand how the nozzle is sort of governing what's happening in, in the turbine, um, we can look at this graphically and also see the impact of the nozzle area on the turbine performance. So the nozzle area relative to the turbine area essentially sets the turbine outlet non-dimensional mass flow which then sets the turbine pressure ratio. So here we start with the figure on the right and this shows what's going on um, at the nozzle exit. And so if we're sort of over in a regime where uh, the, the nozzle is choked, so the non-dimensional mass flow is a constant, um, we sort of go across until we hit, here's a plot of the exit non-dimensional mass flow from the turbine at whatever its area is, um, and that's gonna specify some pressure ratio for the turbine. If we had a smaller nozzle exit, um, we would have a smaller, value here and we'd come across and we'd end up with a lower pressure ratio for the turbine. Even we can use this plot to figure out what's going on even if the propulsive nozzle is unchoked. Right? Still we basically let's say we were uh, at this point here um, so the uh, turbine or the propelling nozzle is unchoked we can still go across um, get to the, the exit non-dimensional mass flow from the turbine and if we get down here what we see is that we're still in the choked region for the tur for the turbine based on its inlet conditions. We'd have to go down to a very low um, nozzle exit air, uh, no nozzle exit pressure indeed um, probably close to 1.1 before uh, we would unchoke the turbine. So here's the procedure to numerically solve for our off-design operating conditions. So we assume the turbine inlet and the propulsive nozzle are choked. We find the turbine pressure and temperature ratios based on that assumption. We calculate our engine performance to get P naught 9 over PA. If the nozzle is indeed choked, then we're done. Um, if the nozzle is unchoked, then we calculate the non-dimensional mass flow using the, pressure, the nozzle pressure ratio from step 2 as a guess and find revised uh, turbine pressure and temperature ratios. We then find the turbine power, which of course equals the compressor power, and get the compressor exit, uh, pre the compressor pressure ratio, therefore the overall engine pressure ratio and the nozzle pressure ratio. We update the nozzle exit non-dimensional mass flow and repeat steps four and five until the uh, non-dimensional mass flow at nozzle exit converges. To obtain the compressor working line, uh, we basically have to determine the mass flow rate of air through the engine. If the nozzle is choked, then the compressor pressure ratio um, will be fixed by the turbine and nozzle area ratios. Um, so the non-dimensional mass flow of the compressor inlet then becomes purely a function of T naught four over T naught two, right? So M bar, bar two is M bar four times the area ratio between four and two, the compressor pressure ratio um, and something involving the CPs and, and the total temperatures. So we can, but of course the pressure ratio can also be written in terms of the temperature ratio. So at the end of the day, this thing just depends on P naught four over T naught two plus geometry. And then the working line of the compressor is simply the locus of the pressure ratio versus mass flow points, right? So for any value of P naught four over T naught two, we can get both the non-dimensional mass flow into the engine and the compressor pressure ratio, and combining those two uh, yields points on the compressor working line. And we see that here um, for, for our engine that we're dealing with. Uh, basically, we have this black line, um, so as we reduce the overall pressure ratio, the mass flow comes down. Um, and if we account for the unchoking of the nozzle, then we get this sort of deviation from the straight line behavior. So now here's an important point about compressors. So 
So fixing that working line, as we showed on the previous slide, tell us uh, what the compressor and therefore the engine shaft rotational speed is, why or why not? Think about this for a couple minutes before you move on to the next part of the video, um, and we'll also take this up during the tutorial.